Yoga community, welcome back to another Community Spotlight. Today, we're really excited to be joined by Renee Hughes, who is a certified health coach and is going to talk a little bit about how she uses social media and social media automation in her business. So I'll pass it over to Renee real quick to introduce herself, and then we'll get into the interview. Go right ahead, Renee. Hi, guys. Yeah, so I have had a whole list for the last years. And you guys who are doing this type of, type of coaching business, you know how difficult time is because the, the focus is really on developing content, developing your program and taking care of your clients, but then you've got to be present on social media. And, and so it's kind of hard for me to express how much I appreciate the way Meet Edgar is set up and what it's done for me because, you know, social media, you have to have it now. You have to have a presence. And um, my team and I just didn't have the time to constantly be trying to upload and figure out what, but to be able to have a place where you can put in content and kind of have it repost took away a lot of the stress and the time. The time factor is the thing. Um, so it's really just helped me to have time to develop my program and to focus on my clients. Yeah, I love that so much. And as you said, it's pretty necessary to be on social media. You know, people go there to get social proof. They go there to kind of get to know who they're going to be working with, especially in a coaching atmosphere. And there's this thing in social media that we talk about a lot called the no like and trust factor. And I imagine that's so important for a coach that if someone's going to be working with you, they want to know that they're going to get your style. They're going to connect and resonate with it. So can you talk a little bit about how you use social media to allow people to get to know you a a little bit and to get to feel comfortable that they are going to choose the right coach in you when they actually sign up for your program? Yeah, I have a couple of categories that I, I specifically focus on. One is engagement. Hmm. So asking questions because people love to also get give their opinion. So um, there's a lot of holistic practitioners out there. There are a lot of people who have tried a lot of different things. So when I post about something specific and I say, you know, I found that this really helps my clients that have thyroid issues or this really helps my clients with arthritis and this is where I've seen success. What about you guys? What have you found? So that's something that people like to express, you know, what they've learned and what, what they've experienced. And the other thing I have is called, I call it warm and fuzzies. So that's when I tell a story or I talk about someone's experience or my own experience or how especially now with the culture and everything that's happening in the world, just a little bit of acknowledgement of what that's doing to our emotions and how I'm helping myself and my clients get through that with aromatherapy and, and through the coaching that I do is huge. The mental clarity that, that um, I'm able to support and the emotional, the removal, the release of emotional toxins and stuff that's been built up over, over many years, but then these life events, kind of make it come to the a fore. And so if you, can, if you can talk about those things in a way that um, can reach a person's heart and they can feel it and they can kind of see themselves in it, um, it's a beautiful thing because it, uh, that connects you to them and it kind of lets them know, yeah, this is someone I'd like to get to know better. Oh man, I love everything that you just said, especially this idea that a lot of things you share are actually some of your past client stories because that is some of the strongest marketing that we have. So yeah. often when we go online to purchase something, we're like, I don't know if this is gonna work for me, but if we can see that you have um, had results and outcomes for other people, that puts mm -hmm. us much more at ease and that puts us in a state that we're excited to hand over our credit card and pay for this outcome that you're promising. Um, and I love this idea of using the meat Ecker categories to do that. If you guys don't no, Meet Ecker software is based on a category system of posting, which just allows you to get a variety of different content in there. And it sounds like, Renee, you're using it for the exact right ways of developing this um, kind of human connection with your audience. Now, when it comes time to actually asking for the sale on social media, that part gets a little bit trickier, I think, sometimes, mostly because of our mindsets of asking for money is such a really uncomfortable thing in our society. So once you've kind of built up your know, like, and trust factor, how how do you go about actually selling on social media in a way that you feel pretty confident about? That's a great question. It took me a long, long, long time <laughs> to figure that out. Um, but I found a company that I work with that really helps me with um, placing ads and how to tell a story and how to write copy. And we do it in a way where you have it where a person can really feel that you get what they're going through. You talk to those pain points. 
you have resolution without getting too personal, without being too direct. Um, I use Facebook a lot. I feel like that's the place where um, my clients are. And I used to hate Facebook. I felt like they were against business owners and they made it really tough for us, but it's really not the case. Um, and, and really asking for the sale becomes easier when you think about the value. So usually, you know, you start with your lead magnet, you start with an opt-in, you start with something free that's really valuable. And when a person can see that value, they're, they're excited and then you follow up with an offer. And it's, it's not difficult because you really do know that if the person takes advantage of this offer, they're going to feel better. And so it's more, you feel more of a, a support, you feel like a support person. Like this, I have something that really will help what you just said, which is it's really great to get on the phone with someone if you can, so you can speak specifically to them. But when you know your product, your service, your offering really is gonna help, it takes away that icky factor because you speak to it as if you're a friend offering help. Oh my gosh, I love that so much because when we're on social media, so often we're not there to be sold to, we're there to connect with our friends and family. So if you can make your brand messaging be like you're actually just speaking to a friend, it's going to really show up in their feeds in the way people will read it and not just scroll past being like, oh, another ad that I don't want to use. So that is so, so wise. Um, so when you're thinking a little bit more about scheduling things and offering this value that you're talking about up front, when you're putting your time slots onto your Meet Edgar account, how do you go about choosing the actual times to post? Do you have any strategies you've taken to make sure you're optimizing when your posts go out? There's a couple of things. Meet Edgar actually had some suggestions. Um, I don't remember how that worked, but I just remember using that. <laughs> they have some suggested times for your post, which tends to work really well. And then I also look at, for example, Facebook has an analysis insights section. If you go to insights, it will tell you when you get the most views, who's viewing, you know, mostly anything you would want to know. And that helps a lot. Yeah, for sure. This idea that everyone's audience is so different that you want to go in and see like what type of content your audience is really uh, latching onto or when they're actually online um, to warm their schedule. So I'm glad that you're kind of looking into those Facebook insights quite a bit. Yeah. Um, now you mentioned getting engagement on your posts and asking questions at the beginning. And I think that this is something a lot of us are a little afraid to do sometimes, but a lot of us know that we need engagement on our posts. So when it comes down to actually engaging with their, your community, that's not something you can automate really. You can automate the posting, but you can't automate engaging in real time. So what tips do you have to stay sane and actually managing the engagement part of your posting schedule? Um, that's a good, <clears throat> that's a really good question. So using Meet Edgar, you're able to, um, you can't reply from there, but you can get the engagement going from there by how you post. And then what we do is my programs manager, she goes in and she'll reply to anything that comes in. Um, we just try to stay on it by looking at the, like the Facebook chats and things like that, email, it'll come in however you tell them to connect with you. Um, also just people commenting on your posts, um, Instagram, Facebook, they make it pretty easy that you can go in with the notifications and go in and answer questions and, um, show appreciation for people taking the time to answer. Um, if I put a poll, you know, in my groups and things like that, which is great with Meet Edgar, you can also post in your groups, which is amazing. Um, and I'll put a poll or something like that uh, in there or ask questions, which that's such an important thing with groups is because those are your people. Like those, those are the people who are really going to tell you um, what, sorry, what's what, you know, what they're looking for, what your, your, um, your audience is really looking for. And so I use them a lot for engagement and talking. So I'll do posts or um, polls or just talking back and forth in the groups. 
Yeah, that's awesome. I agree. I think groups are such an underused side of social media. Yeah, that we're so really cool. People talking back to you is understood in groups that that's something right. that you want. Whereas people kind of going onto pages aren't really sure sometimes if this is the appropriate place to actually engage and talk to a brand. Um, so if your brand doesn't have a group yet, maybe that would be another great avenue for you to get more customer research. And like Renee said, meet Edgar's way of amplifying your message out to multiple profiles. You won't have to do too much more work to keep that consistent posting schedule going out to your new group. Um, and yeah, this idea that if you're going to ask a question, be sure to go on there, check your notifications. Like Renee said, all the networks make this incredibly easy to do to make sure that you're actually just replying to every single comment you get. Even if the person doesn't ask you a question back, reply to those comments because that's how you get people to engage longer. Um, awesome. These tips have been really actionable and fantastic for our community. And I would love for you just to leave us with one more either marketing tip or one more hack that you use in the Edgar um, that we can take action on today, Renee. I have something that I do, um, and I, I want to say that you gave me this idea. I can't remember. But I had contacted me, Edgar, especially at the beginning, just to help set up everything. And one of the things that I do with my programs manager is that we, we will load um, our, our images ahead of time. So sometimes you just spend so much time putting your copy with your image. And so what we do, we created a category called for approval. And so I have either my program manager or my creative uh, director, she will go in and just pile up images, put it in the for approval category, and then I can go in and put copy with it. It makes it so fast, you guys. So it's, I know that that's a big thing is the time consuming thing, but you can have other people um, support you within Meet Edgar to load up the things and have a separate category that's not posted. So you just don't put it on your schedule. You just leave it in your category as for approval or to be checked or something like that. Um, I think that that is, I love that. It's such a time saver. And I really, really love, I love that. I love all the categories. It helps you to think about how to interact with your audience. Um, giving you a, and I love how the schedule is laid out because you it tells you um, you're able to look at it and just see okay today I'm going to do warm and fuzzy this day I'm going to do engagement I'm going to ask a question here whatever it is and it's just automated once you load it up it's just it's great 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 time saver and it allows you to have quality content Oh man, yeah, I love this idea of going in there and having a category that you can all collaborate in to get that more quality content out there. Because if we're just leaving social media to post when we have time, your no, your followers are gonna notice that and they're gonna see that the intention behind the, to the post hasn't been thought out in the way that you could think it out. So I love that so much. Um, thank you so much for sharing these tips today. It has been really fun to chat with you. Um, you guys, if you're taking anything from this video, give this video a like and let us know in the comments below. Um, if you have any further questions for Renee, I will put her website in the comments pinned to the top there that you can go ahead and research more on her there. Thanks so much for your time, Renee. No problem. Thank you. Bye-bye.